Hi there, and welcome to another session where we'll be looking at using files in Java and the IntelliJ IDE. So, when we start up IntelliJ, you're probably going to be met with a screen that looks a little bit like this. Let's create a new project. We're using that for this. I'm going to call this file example and just go with the defaults. So IntelliJ will go and create a dummy file for me, sort of a modified higher world type thing. We've got a main class, main.java, the file main.java, and some basic hello and welcome, and a little for loop that prints out five numbers, which we're not going to use. So I'm going to go through and do that. And we're here. Work with files. Java uses a file object. Be creating one of those file, and it's immediately telling me that it can't resolve this. Do I want to import the class? You can click on that if you want. This is accessible using the Alt and Enter key combination as well, and that works in NetBeans as well. Those of you that file equals new file, and we now enter the path of our file. And you'll see that IntelliJ over here is prompting me that the type of data I need to include as a parameter in the constructor for this file object is the path of the file. We're going to be placing this file in the root of our project folder. So I'm going to be able to just type the file name. I'll call this biodata CSV. This file will contain comma separated values, which we'll process a little later. The file doesn't exist yet. We'll get to that now. Right. One of the benefits of the scanner class, it's designed to process files. So I'm scanner for this. Scanner, scanner equals new scanner. And we're going to connect the scanner to the file. Scanners work with files. So you might be familiar with doing this system dot in, and I would now be using my scanner to get input from the system console. What it's worth, let's Alt Enter and there we go. Alt Enter, and you'll notice that it has quickly imported this for me. Resolved that particular error. Right. So system dot in. Your console is actually a file. If you've been using this approach to deal with input, I have something connected to the system console, got a string variable, let's call it input just for the moment. Put equals scanner dot next line. Getting a line from the scanner. System.in a file. I can replace that with a file that I've just created. Yeah. And this now links straight across to that file. Of course, you'll notice also I immediately have another error. IntelliJ is trying to give me some hints, and it's telling me unhandled exception file not found exception. Very friendly program in many senses. So as I hover over this error, it's telling me add exception to method. There are two ways to do this. You can add, either have it add a throws line to the main method up top there, there, or you can have a try and catch. So enter, and here are our options. Add exception to method signature which would do that, throws file not found exception. This basically defers the way the error is going to be handled. Now you're going to get a whole lot of error printed out um, when you run the program because the file doesn't exist at this stage. Why it's throwing file not found. But if we actually want to handle the exception and do something sensible with it, we need to wrap this inside a try and catch. So let's go back. Enter, and we're going to try and surround the track. There's 
one of the nice things about using a really friendly system like IntelliJ here is it does some of the hard work for you. So what's it done? You'll notice my creating a scanner, which is set to novel. Right now, that's just a reference. It doesn't point to anything because it's not. And it's moved the actual assignment. I'm assigning my scanner to a file into this try block. There. That try block has its catch, where we have file not found exception, and it's creating a instance of a file not found exception, E. If I scroll up a little bit, there we go, you'll find it's also added java.io.file not found exception to input. Right now, it's going to throw a runtime exception. So the practical effect, as far as anyone from outside is concerned, is that this does exactly the same thing. Or it's going to throw a whole lot of exception output on standard error. Scary. But I can now replace this with something a little bit more sensible, at least from a user perspective, and say, yeah, I could start. We have a fully functioning program, and we can check to see whether this exception is going to work. If we run this program, fire it up at the top, telling me that input is never used. It's telling me that scanner is null, and it's getting to that point because it's through exception. Notice the message over there the file could not be found. It failed in a friendly way, but then we have the next thing that we use. Right. Let's get rid of that. We're going to process this file over here. But before we can process it, I suppose a file should exist. So I'm going to create a file in the project, and I want to be able to access this without having to type in the path. So I'm moving across to file, e.g. over here. And we are going to right-click, open the menu. Those of you using apples will have to press Option and the button to open up this menu, I can create a new file, biodata, biodata, and let's type something. So let's give a and born a couple of days before Christmas. Something along those lines, give ID number, and let's say that it was born in five uh, one. Fine. So we've got a few different types of data that we're working with. I won't be worrying about that too much. Save this. But we can now read that line. Now read that exactly the way I would have before. We bring, I'm going to call line this time equals scanner dot next there's only the one line in this file at the moment. so let's see what happened System. for those of you that want to learn the shortcuts there is a nice little one you can just take this out and this tab book complete for you And let's see what happens. We're going to run this again and watch the window down at the bottom. Yep. There we go. The line read Joe Soap and some All right. So we've successfully managed to read this file. I need to process that line. Again, a scanner is a type of parser. And what a parser does is it splits strings up into tokens. This is actually what's happening behind the scenes with this file. It's read the whole file and it's splitting it up into tokens where each token represents one line of the file. This does mean that there is a limit on the size of file that can be managed by class. Really large files, you may have to use a buffered read 
step. But for the sort of thing we are going to be doing in this class, scanner file. Okay, let's see what we do. All right, so I'm going to make a new scanner and I'm going to call it line scanner. It's going to scan just the one line. Scanner. Here. There we go. Scanner. And let's connect that to the line that I read in. In exactly the same way that I could connect to the file over there or to system.n when I was reading from the console, I'm now connecting to a line. And that means I can process that line in exactly the same way that I processed input from system.n. So, bring it. Client name equals line scanner in this case. Dot next, we're going to read the next token. Or at least we're going to try to. There is one obstacle though, scanner by default reads tokens as separated by spaces. This is not going to work quite the way I want it yet. We're going to have to add one small modification. But let's just get this out of the way first. Bring and and B. Scan. Name. Always spelling is important. The moment I'm using this ooh, spelling. The moment I'm using this as a way of showing the output that I'm getting, you'll notice by the way that this is grayed out. That's IntelliJ trying to tell me you haven't yet used this thing, and there's the message popping up. Client POV is never used. So that warning will go away as soon as this uh, Yeah. Oh. Running this program will work. The only problem is I'm not going to get the results that I really want yet. No such an exception. Where is our error? All right, I'm getting some problems. I actually don't have any commas. Rather, I'm right now it's reading and it's separating things on spaces, and there are no spaces. If I were to change this file and add a few more spaces, there we go. This would probably work. Okay. Yeah. So it's read things, and you'll notice it separated Joe from so from that, and I could hasn't got the. But we're working with comma separated values, so I'm going to restore the commas. Yeah. And we need to tell it that I must scan and must pass this and separate the tokens based on commas. To use to do that, we're going to add one. Well, set one option in in the scanner. So line scanner use delimiter. There it is. And I'm going to tell it to use the comma as a delimiter. There's absolutely no reason why your delimiter has to be a single character. You can use a whole string if you want to. So for example, a traditional Unix password file has been separated to um, like that. Right. So now we have the reading oh, splitting the line that I've read on the comma, which means I should get screen below correct. Let's see. Yeah. So name read, Joe Soap, client ID, 
summer weather ID and client date of birth support. Right, this is one line and it works. But what happens if I've got more than one line? I don't want to keep on repeating this stuff. This is where looping structures come. Problem with files is you never actually know how big the file is, how many items are actually stored in the file. So, close relative, soup, and anger. Just change. Oh. Yeah. Right, and now I have two lines in this file. So I want to read those two lines, which means I'm going to wrap this little process I've got here, reading the line, there we go, rereading that line. I'm going to wrap this in a while loop. I need to know, and I want to keep on doing this until we've reached the end. Next, Docker, Raptors, Brackets. There we go. One of the other nice things about IDEs, much like this one, go down to where I want that to end, and I say, right, let me type that bracket. Boom, does the indenting for me. That's a really useful, really useful feature. So we've got our has next. All I did was I wrapped my code in the loop, and let's see. There we are. We've got Joe Soap, Jane Soup, and their data. And that's it. We're working with files. So I hope you found that useful. See you again next time.